Hey, what is up, Cinema Masters? Hope you guys are all doing well. Today, we're gonna to be looking at three unique lighting setups that you can use on your next product shoot. So when it comes to shooting commercials, if you want your commercial to be really impactful and emotional, you usually want to focus the commercial on the customer, on their lifestyle, on the demographic that your client is trying to target. And so most of the time, that's the emphasis that you're going to put on the video. However, what's a good commercial without a good product shot or a good hero shot of the product. And this is especially true if you're working on any kind of commercial for a physical product. You usually want a hero shot or something that can go maybe throughout the video or at least at the end of the video with the logo on it. So I'm gonna show you a few different lighting setups that you can use on your next product shoot. So in this video, we're working with a glass perfume bottle, which is really cool. It's gonna allow us to get some really nice reflections of the light on the glass and on the angles of the bottle. So let's go ahead and jump into it and show you how we do them. So starting with setup number one, the computer screenshot. So what we did on this lighting setup is the first thing we did is we covered the table with a black fabric. We want to make sure that we're not getting any unwanted reflections from the table so that the background is dark and everything is covered. And then I took my laptop and I flipped it up onto its screen. So the screen was laying flat onto the table and then went to YouTube and started looking up some abstract video backgrounds. We're basically looking for something that we could use as a background underneath the perfume bottle so that we can kind of have some cool abstract effects happening around it and have some of that light shining through the bottle. If you're doing this and you're going out and looking for them, you wanna make sure that the effects that you're finding aren't cheesy. We tried it out with a, quite a few different ones. Make sure you go through and find the ones that match and match the color of the background to the color of the product that you're shooting so that it's either you know a similar color to what you're shooting or maybe a complementary color to make it look really nice together. Now, even though we're using the computer screen to do a lot of the work here and to create a lot of the effect, you still need lights in order to light up the scene. And so the main key light we used in this shot was the Aperture 120D with a light dome on it. The light dome makes the Aperture 120D really big, which gives us a really nice soft light source, which is what we want in this situation. We don't want any hard light coming through the perfume bottle, and we don't want anything reflecting off of the computer or the screen. So when you're setting up your lights around the perfume bottle, you want to make sure that you're getting just nice lines of light. You don't want to put the light just directly over top of it so it's just lighting up the entire thing. You still want to make sure there's a lot of good contrast in there, but that you're just getting the edges of the angles of the bottle kind of lit up and getting these little lines in there that are going to make it look really cool and really kind of luxurious in a way. Now, the last thing we're doing with the Aperture 120D is we put a grid on it. It Velcros right to the light dome. And what that's doing is helping control the spill of the light. So we're helping kind of focus the light forward just directly onto our product and making sure that that light doesn't spill onto the background, which would cause all sorts of unwanted effects. Now, our other light in this scene was the Aperture MC, which we're putting on the opposite side of the bottle. Basically, what this is doing is just adding more reflections to the bottle. When it comes to shooting glass or bottles like this, as a general rule of thumb, more reflections are better. Obviously, you don't want to go overboard with it and you don't want to over light it. You still want that nice contrast, but adding more lights in multiple areas around the bottle will just give you lots of different effects all over it. The other cool thing about the Aperture MC is that it has lighting effects built into it. So we found a few video backgrounds that looked really cool with like fire effects on them or other effects that kind of maybe looked like fire. And so what I did is I took the Aperture MC and I set it to the fire mode and turned it down. So it's a pretty subtle effect, but it kind of creates this kind of fire light looking effect on the bottle, helping kind of light up the bottle and make it glow 
like a fire. So after we did the setup with the bottle laying on top of the computer screen, we decided to try another setup where the, we brought the computer screen so it was vertical and just facing straight up. And then I took a rubber floor mat that I had and put it over top of the keyboard on the laptop and put the perfume bottle on top of that. What that's doing is just basically making the video a background where the bottle is just standing in front of it, which was another really interesting way of doing this. For this setup, we did a similar thing with the aperture lights. We put the 120D with the light dome over on one side to give us some of those big reflections, and then an MC on the other side to just give us some more reflections in the bottle. Also experimenting with some of the lighting effects in order to really push the vibe of this shot. Now on to the second setup of the day, the black background shot. So in this shot, we were going for a completely black background and then using reflections on the bottle to make it stand out from that background. So in order to create this effect, the first most important thing is that you have a good bit of distance from the background. So you don't wanna be up against a wall or some other furniture. You wanna make sure there's some distance there. Now we were working in kind of a small room, so we didn't have a lot of space. We were you know, pushed back maybe three or four feet, but even that, if you know how to control your lights really well, can be enough. Basically, as a general rule of thumb, the further you can get away from the background, the better, and that's just gonna help it so that you're not lighting up the background so that you can get that really nice, deep, dark, black background. Now we already had the black fabric on the table, so we we're all set as far as that goes. What I did is I took a piece of glass out of a picture frame that I had laying around the house and laid that on top of the black fabric. That's what's gonna give us the reflection effect of the bottle in the glass, and then the black underneath it will make it so that it just looks like a continuous black background. Now to create the reflections on the bottle to help it stand out from the background, I used two Aperture MCs, one on each side of the bottle. Now the Aperture MCs also come with a little diffusion cover that you can put on them. So I put those on to kind of help diffuse the light just a little bit. The problem with using lights like the MCs is that you end up getting a lot of spill on the background because there's no way to control them. And then you also get a lot of lens flares in the camera. So what I did is I grabbed the fabric on the table, pulled up some of the corners up on top of the table to kind of help block out the light from hitting the camera lens and from hitting the background so that we could still maintain that solid black background. Now I also brought in the Aperture 120D with the light dome and the grid into this shot in order to kind of fill in the scene a little bit more. For this shot, I put the 120D somewhat above the bottle, kind of at about a three quarter angle to just help light it up a little bit more. And then of course had the grid on it to make sure that we were blocking out the light from hitting the background again so that we could keep that black background. And the last thing, just to add interest to this shot, I took a spray bottle full of water and just sprayed down the perfume bottle just to add some little elements of light reflection. Those little spots of water on the bottle just kind of created a really interesting effect. Now you'll notice looking at this shot that it isn't perfectly clean. There is a little bit of light leaking in on the sides and hitting some of the fabric on the table. It's really hard to get it perfect working with these types of lights. However, this kind of thing is really easy to clean up in post. So if you have a shot like this where you're having problems with the light kind of leaking in there a little bit, you can just take it into your editing software, put a mask around the product, the perfume bottle in this case, and then add a vignette or bring down the exposure of the outside a little bit just to keep the scene nice and dark. And last but not least, moving on to our last setup of the day, the hard light shot. Now with this shot, I wanted to do something completely different from the other ones. So we kind of went for this kind of hard light effect, whereas we were using soft light for the most part on the other ones, and kind of came up with this really like high fashion type artsy kind of look that I think turned out really, really cool. So the way we did this is first we put down a white bed sheet over the table to just create a different effect. So rather than having the black background in this one, I figured we'd go for more of a high key kind of white background for this. And then to add some texture to the scene, I went out in my garage and got some walnut boards that I've been using on a woodworking project. And I brought those in and stacked them up on the table in order to give us kind of some wood elements to work with. Now for the hard light, I used again the Aperture 120D, only this time I took the light dome off of it so we're not getting a nice soft source. We wanna go for that hard light and a really focused light on the bottle. And so what I did is I took some black wrap or some cine foil and wrapped it around the light, creating kind of a cone around the light, which is gonna help kind of focus our light forward and then shaped the black wrap so that it was creating a line of light or this beam of light kind of going across the wood. 
The other cool thing that's happening from having this hard light blasting this perfume bottle is that we're getting refraction through the angles of the glass on the bottle. And that refraction is reflecting onto the wood. So you get this really nice, deep, dark shadow on the other side of the bottle. But then inside that shadow, we had all these really cool geometric shapes, which are just adding to the interest of the shot. In addition to the 120D being our main light source with the hard light here, I also wanted to bring in a couple of Aperture MCs to just kind of help fill in the light a little bit. So I put one of them above the perfume bottle and one of them on the side, which is just helping kind of fill in the shadows a little bit. When you have just one hard light source hitting something and no other light, you tend to get a really deep dark shadow, which is pretty cool. But in this case, I wanted to soften up the look a little bit, which meant just lightening up those shadows just a touch, just to make it a little bit more appealing. And the last thing that I did on this shot, just to kind of push the artsy kind of high fashion looking effect, is I used a 1 8 Promist filter on my lens. What the Promist filter does is it takes those really bright highlights that you get on the angles of the glass, and it creates kind of a blooming effect or a halo effect around those. So you get a little bit of this kind of like 90s fashion looking effect which I thought worked really well for this particular setup. So there you go, there's three unique lighting setups you can use on your next product shoot. Hopefully that's helpful and valuable and you guys can take away some things from this and try them out on your next shoot that you're doing. When it comes to cinematography and creating a cinematic look, lighting is absolutely the number one most important skill that you need to learn. And when it comes down to it, knowing how to approach a scene from a lighting standpoint will improve your cinematography far more than anything else. So if you guys are interested in learning how to create cinematic looking films and how to create lighting setups that are going to really take your films to the next level, I've got a full masterclass on lighting, which I'll link to down below. It's on sale right now if you're interested in checking it out. Within the course, I go into not just how to recreate different lighting setups, but also how to think through how to light a scene. So the approach that I use every time I go into any scene, whether I'm lighting a perfume bottle or I'm lighting a person. Believe it or not, the process is the same. There's a specific process and a specific framework that you should follow in order to know how to create visually appealing films with lighting. And in addition to teaching you the theory of lighting, I also break down tons of lighting techniques and show you how to get different moods and looks with your lighting, plus breaking down some of the lighting setups that I've used in some of my work and exactly how I did it. Anyway, if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check out the link down in the description below and check out the course, and I'll see you on the next video.